So back in March, the International Criminal Court announced that it'd be launching a probe into Israel over the occupation of the Palestinian territories as well as potential war crimes. Now, at the time, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said that the United States government is firmly opposed to this investigation and says that the ICC doesn't have the jurisdiction to actually investigate Israel over what is being alleged. So the question is, seeing how biased the Israeli courts are against the Palestinian people, I mean, when they're being ev evicted from their homes, Israeli courts approve it like the chance that they're winning is almost zero percent so the question is if they're not able to domestically advance their cause legally because the court system is biased against them and internationally the u.s government is against that too then what exactly are palestinians supposed to do like what avenue are they supposed to take to advance their case legally? This is a question that Representative Ilhan Omar asked to Secretary of State Antony Blinken. And as you're going to see, uh, his answer is uh, incoherent. Uh, I know you oppose the court's investigation in both um, Palestine and in Afghanistan. I haven't seen any evidence in either cases that domestic courts can uh, both can and will prosecute alleged war crimes and crimes against humanity. And I would emphasize that in Israel and Palestine, uh, this includes crimes committed by both the Israeli security forces and Hamas. In Afghanistan, it includes crimes committed by the Af Afghan national government and the Taliban. So in, in both of these cases, if domestic courts can't or won't pursue justice, and we oppose the ICC, where do we think victims are supposed to go for justice? And what justice mechanisms do you support for them? Thank, uh, thank you. Um, first, l l let me just say at the outset that um, it is impossible not to be profoundly moved by uh, not just the uh, uh, loss of life, in the recent uh, violence and, and, and conflict, uh, but especially uh, the children whose whose lives were lost, and we 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 all have a you know a tendency to throw statistics and numbers out there, but uh, we were talking about um, boys and girls, Israelis and Palestinians, uh, as well as men and women, and uh, I think uh, none of us, from whatever from whatever perspective, we we come. Uh, can can lose sight of that. So that's one thing that's that's very important. Look, I, you, you know our views on um, uh, on the ICC and its its jurisdiction. We continue to believe that absent uh, a Security Council uh, referral or absent uh, the uh, request by the, uh, the state itself, uh, that that's not appropriate. I continue uh, to believe that whether it is uh, the United States or Israel. Uh, both of us uh, have the uh, have the means. Mr. Secretary, I, I do understand that point. I'm asking what mechanism you think is, is available to them. I, I believe that we have, uh, whether it's the United States or Israel, we both have uh, the mechanisms to um, make, make sure that there is accountability uh, in uh, in in any situations where there are concerns about um, uh, use of force. Uh, and uh, human rights, uh, et cetera. I believe that both of our democracies have that uh, have that capacity, and we've demonstrated it, and uh, we'll need to continue to demonstrate it going forward. That was an abysmal response. I'm sure that the Palestinian people are super relieved to hear that the answer to the alternative for the Israeli court system uh, for them is just the Israeli court system. Oh, what's that? The Israeli court system isn't working for you? Well, um, just use the Israeli court system. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering that for me. I was really confused about what to do, but that really clarified it for me. After me asking you, what can I do because the Israeli court system isn't working for me because it's biased against Palestinians, you say, just use the Israeli court system, idiot. Oh, well, why, why didn't they think about this? Do the Palestinians know that it's that easy? And uh, like him at the beginning of that answer, prefacing his non-answer by saying, oh, well, you know, it's so devastating to see the lives that are being lost. Save it. Because as Israel is bombing Gaza, one of the most densely populated areas on the planet, you're giving them more bombs. You're defending them. So save it.
you don't care. You're lying. And if you do care, then your actions indicate that you don't care. In fact, that you actually support what Israel was doing. Because, I mean, if you're giving a country that's committing war crimes more weapons, what else are we supposed to take away from that? So, I mean, this is a short video because I think that the video speaks for itself. It's a great question from Ilhan Omar, but this is an issue with the U.S. government failing to recognize the jurisdiction of the ICC. You see, no president wants to join the ICC. Bush was against it. Clinton was against it. Obama was against it. Trump was against it. Biden's against it. Now, ask yourself, why do U.S. presidents so vociferously oppose our government joining the ICC and recognizing their jurisdiction? Well, it's because in the event we actually join the ICC, how many U.S. officials would be tried for war crimes? Henry Kissinger? Cheney? Trump? Bush? Obama? I mean, by agreeing to join the ICC, essentially presidents are in a way, opening themselves up to investigations because many U.S. presidents do very terrible things that I think are clearly violations of international law. And yes, they meet the criteria for war crimes, crime, crimes against humanity. So in the event they signed on to the ICC, they're opening themselves up to a future investigation. So this is why every single U.S. president has opposed this because they want to be able to commit crimes and get away with it so it's just this is really frustrating but i'm glad that somebody asked the question because you can see how foolish a public official looks when they try to answer it there's no answer for this the answer is that he doesn't believe that palestinians should have any avenue to pursue their cause legally speaking they're just supposed to shut up and take it that's literally effectively what the u.s government is saying